When we asked the Telecom TV Open RAN Summit audience last year about the most important areas of focus for the community during the next 12 months, the development of systems integration models and blueprints attracted a lot of votes behind only total cost of ownership and security measures. So to get an update on SI developments, I'm talking today with Christian Toivo, Executive Director at the Telecom Infra Project, or TIP, which has been doing a lot of work in this area in recent years. So, Christian, good to talk with you again. Thanks very much for joining us. So, um, is systems integration uh, the biggest challenge for network operators looking to deploy open RAM-based systems? Yeah, Ray, I, I do think it actually is, if not the most important, at least one of the absolutely top uh, priorities when we discuss um, with the operators that are today either involved in advanced trials or early commercial deployments or operators that are in the consideration of moving forward with open RAN. They all say system integration is a challenge that takes up a lot of their time and their thinking uh, and I what I would like to say is that when I talk about system integration in the context of Open RAN, I see it as uh, as the complete effort needed to uh, integrate, test, and maintain an Open RAN system, which is built on uh, individual products and components, uh, and that effort needs to address uh, the combination of uh, radio units are used with uh, CUDU software solutions uh, that are running on a cloud orchestration um, solution uh, which in itself is running on a virtualized uh, general purpose compute platform so that is the actual system and uh, by the way the system is then also complemented by by operational maintenance rick and applications eventually and this challenge to kind of put it all together validate it and then maintain it is is what keeps people at, people awake if i put it that way how to best do that and uh, indeed i had the opportunity also to talk some smaller albeit advanced operators who don't have the same bandwidth as the main early adopters the big operators that are engaged in open run today and, and they have all said to me that they need to see kind of an approach uh, that gives them the confidence that the system integration is kind of under control before they can engage big, engage big time with open RAN because they don't have the resource or the capability to do it themselves in the, in the same fashion as some of the early operators who started some years ago uh, are able to do. And indeed, just to give an industry overall flavor to it, there was the open RAN world conference a couple of weeks ago in Berlin, which I had the opportunity to be part of. And it, this was clearly highlighted in one of the keynotes as well from one of the operators who's been in the forefront of integrating their open RAN solution. And they kind of called out for a global approach to what they called uh, open RAN certification, which encompasses all those steps that I just mentioned. Okay, uh, thanks Christian. So uh, a, a lot to consider there in the full uh, systems integration process. What is the Telecom Infra project doing to help operators in these regards? Uh, yeah, in fact, we see this as our key uh, mission, if you like, to, to address in, in the open run space that we are, are, are focusing on inside TIP. Uh, we did say in October last year at our FUSE conference in Madrid that we intend to build up an approach where we would look at how the incumbent vendors who have done this uh, throughout the years, uh, integrating, testing and maintaining their own RAN solutions, how we could use that model but translate that into a community-driven approach that also includes the broader operator vendor community uh, and then come out with a proposal and that's exactly what we have been working uh, with over the last uh, five six months and we are just in the process of uh, releasing a white paper that describes our take on this uh, and we are also working with a number of um, entities meaning building up a 
kind of broad coalition, if you like, of uh, different players in the industry from operators to system integrators, the lab partners, and of course the uh, concerned vendors in order to build up a process where we believe TIP could, through its community approach, uh, drive this um, forward. So that's kind of our initiative, which we hopefully can launch even prior to our next FUSE conference, which takes place in October this year. Okay. Now, um, uh, alongside these efforts, there's been a lot of uh, uh, attention and focus on the development of, of blueprints or uh, pre-integrated packages that operators can use to kickstart their processes. But, but might this kind of blueprint approach negate some of Open RAN's possibilities and impact the best of breed opportunities that Open RAN promises? Yeah, that is a very valid question. And indeed, the vision for Open RAN is the possibility to mix and match and hence uh, select the best of breed components and products for your open RAN solution. And I do believe we should not give up on that uh, vision, but I also do believe uh, realistically in the near to midterm future that there is a need to focus on a, on a reasonably um, sized portfolio of open RAN solutions that would include uh, the kind of enough of variety in terms of, of, of vendors, both on the, in terms of the product, be it RU hardware, be it CUDU software, uh, different um, combinations uh, of uh, hardware, compute platforms, and cloud orchestrations. But uh, I think it, it takes a big effort um, to map uh, and test these type of configurations uh, with different combinations of the aforementioned com components and products and really match them to the um, different deployment scenarios that operators would plan for in terms of uh, their open RAN deployment. And typically you would look at what type of deployment scenario uh, would include urban massive MIMO type of environments uh, or semi-rural or even rural deployments. And you would also look at the different transmission and redundancy schemes you as an operator uh, want to apply to your network. And given the variety of scenarios, you need to focus on a limited number of configurations or combinations of those different components and products. Hence, I do believe there is a limit to what the industry is able to bring to the market at least in the in the next couple of years and hence some sort of pre-integration or a process that enables to kind of make the right choices based on the priorities uh, the operators have uh, the uh, requirement um, requirement um, st requirement combination that uh, hopefully enables the vendor community to provide roadmaps that are matching with those requirements that will lead to a limited set of combinations at which in principle are different configurations of open RAN that would be the ones that uh, are deployed and also are picked up then by by following operators for the first phase of open RAN deployment okay yes uh, it, it's benefiting more than just the operators in terms of the ecosystem and, and getting things started, kickstarting uh, these projects and uh, tests and trials. Um, so what more can be done then to, to help operators with their open RAN systems integration strategies? Is there more that can be done at this stage? Uh, yeah, there, there is a lot more to do, obviously, and I would particularly point out uh, the area of working with uh, the scenarios that involve how to deploy open RAN to so-called brownfield uh, environments, meaning environments where we have uh, existing deployed uh, non-open RAN solutions that are being uh, used for all the existing services and maybe even recently deployed to cover 5G launch and so forth. Uh, open RAN will be coexisting with uh, traditional RAN solutions for the next 10 years. And I think it's really important uh, we as an industry 
work on those scenarios, how practically Open RAN would be deployed in such environments. And that needs to be uh, included in our thinking on, on the deployment scenarios, in how we test the solutions, certainly the Open RAN, but also Open RAN in combination then with the existing existing uh, RAN solutions. And this particular plays uh, into how the whole operation and maintenance uh, should be set up in such a way that an end-to-end -end, uh, RAN uh, operation and maintenance framework can be used to ensure that um, the network performs and in case there are uh, failures or problems, they can be addressed uh, in a consistent way. Uh, and I think particularly uh, when we look from an open RAN perspective, uh, the innovation side, which includes RIC and XAPS R apps that are still in the development. Um, I think it's important we define and also work out um, solutions on how that framework uh, will interwork with the existing OSS framework of uh, RAN through the SMO in such a way that important use cases which are applicable for the overall network, regardless if it's open RAN or traditional RAN, for example, uh, functionality to uh, drive energy efficiency or, or, or do capacity management, how those uh, functionalities can be and deployed across the whole network in a consistent way, often also supported by automation and using routines and processes that are consistent for the operators. So I think there's a lot of work to be done in that space that involves both product development, uh, trials, testing, and probably also specification work. Yep, uh, a lot of fun still to come with the uh, the RIC, the X apps, R apps, and the SMO environments. And a lot for the Open RAN ecosystem in general to be thinking about, but all areas that are being addressed by many players across the industry, of course. So, uh, Christian, thanks very much for your updates and insights and for joining us today, and look forward to speaking to you again soon. Thanks very much. Absolutely. Thank you. It was a pleasure.